So in a previous video, I talked about the DNA evidence for evolution and that there's overwhelming evidence that life originated from a single source. Now, I understand this diagram is way too small for you to see, but it's just a cool visual representation of some of the evolution that has taken place over billions of years. Starting down here, which is the origin of life, simple bacterial cell, and here's some other bacterial cells. So these are all prokaryotic, and then a, a separation happens and we end up with eukaryotic organisms. And then we have plants that are a type of eukaryotic organism, and we've got fungi, and we've got animals, and we've got so many different types. Not all of them are obviously shown in this diagram, but it's a cool representation of how we've gone from the origin of life here to all of these different complex and incredible species that we have today. The question that I'm going to answer in this video is how has this happened? How has life evolved from a single simple prokaryotic cell to what we see now? It has something to do with mutations. Let's take a look. So the first thing I'm gonna ask you is, do you remember this? This is my wife's banana cake. And if you remember it, it's from part one of Protein Synthesis, a video on transcription. The point that I was making about my wife's banana cake is that her recipe is so important that she wouldn't just pass it on to someone before making a copy so that she keeps the original safe. And that's what happens in protein synthesis when the DNA is copied and we make some messenger RNA that travels out to the cytoplasm. So what I'm actually gonna do today, and I can't believe I'm going to do this, I'm gonna share with you my wife's famous banana cake recipe. Here it is, right? The moment you've all been waiting for. This is the recipe right here. What I'm gonna do is make some subtle changes to it, to the ingredients or to the method. What I want you to think is, would that cause a big change, a small change, or probably no change at all? Right, let's start. First of all, we've got one egg. What if it changed to two eggs? Hmm. Big change, small change, no change at all. Right, we've also got uh, one cup of butter, what if we made a change here and that becomes an N? Could you still interpret that as butter? You probably could. So probably not gonna to make too much of a change. Right, what if over in the method it says bake at 170 degrees for 40 minutes. What if that became bake at 170 degrees for 740 minutes? Big change, small change, no change at all. Probably a big change for that one, and not a very good one. Uh, what if we were to make, instead of one tablespoon of vanilla essence, two tablespoons of vanilla essence? Big change, probably not. Small change, yeah, probably a small change. Might actually taste a bit better. Hmm, might try that. Okay, sorry, anyway. Right, that's my wife's banana cake recipe. You've had a good look at it now. Go away and, and make yourself one and, and enjoy. No, I haven't gone crazy. The banana cake recipe has a place in this video. We'll come back to that later. What I wanna tell you is that life has evolved because DNA has diversified, which means it has changed, it has become different, and there's lots of different types of DNA now. That has happened through something called mutations. And put simply, mutations are changes that occur in the genetic material, the DNA. So we're going to look at how mutations or changes in the DNA over billions of years have led to the evolution of all of the different species that we see on our earth now. Let's just remind ourselves about some stuff to do with DNA. First of all, cells contain these things called chromosomes. They're linear in eukaryotic cells and they're circular in prokaryotic cells. They're made up of DNA and the sections 
small sections of chromosomes that code for polypeptides or proteins are called genes. So here we're looking at a gene and genes are made up of these sequences of nucleotide nitrogen bases, the G's, T's, C's and A's. And that is the code that directs the production of proteins. So let's have a look at some of that code. Here we have some A's, T's, C's and G's. This might be part of a gene that's gonna direct the production of a protein. Now, a mutation is a change that occurs in this DNA. So let's say this base here, this T, is changed to an A. We'd end up with something like that. And then that would now be passed on because we know that DNA gets passed on. But then another change might occur and, and a base here might be changed. And over time, more changes occur and more changes occur, and the DNA starts to become different. Now, the implication of the DNA becoming different is that changes in DNA mean changes in genes. Changes in genes means changes in proteins that are produced in the cell. And if we change proteins that are produced in the cell, that means we're changing the characteristics of living things. Now, something to bear in mind is these changes in characteristics are usually harmful. The reason for that is because you're causing changes to this process, which is a process that's already working. If you change something that's already working, that's usually not going to be a good thing, right? Think about the cake example. I brought in the recipe. Most of the changes that I was making would cause negative effects on the cake. If you cooked it for too long, it's gonna be burnt. If you added an extra egg, that's not gonna be quite right. If you added too much flour, it's not gonna taste right. But sometimes, on the very rare occasion, a mutation can occur that leads to an advantage for a living thing. And in the banana cake analogy, I was thinking maybe adding an extra teaspoon of vanilla essence might actually make the cake taste a little bit better. And if it makes the cake taste a little bit better, I'm gonna keep on doing it. So that's what happens in evolution. Most of the time, bad things happen with mutations. Here's a couple of examples. This is an example of a birth defect that's caused due to genetic mutations. You can see, obviously, this is harmful. It's not an advantage to have this birth defect. And same thing here in this example. This is a cow that, due to some changes in its DNA, has got two extra sets of legs. And you can see that's obviously not going to be an advantage. So the point that I'm making here is that most often, mutations or changes in the DNA are harmful. The other term we use for that is we call those mutations deleterious. They're bad and we don't want them to happen. On the rare occasion though, as I said, mutations can lead to an advantage for a living thing. Like maybe the extra teaspoon of vanilla essence that adds a bit of flavor to the cake and people enjoy it more. Well, some changes in DNA can lead to characteristics that could be of an advantage to a living thing. Things like maybe an increased sensitivity to light or an increased ability to move faster and escape from predators or chase down your prey or an, a different colouring that perhaps allows you to be more camouflaged in your environment or more attractive to a member of the opposite sex for a reproduction. There's lots of different examples of mutations that have led to advantages. And the thing is, we've had billions of years for these positive mutations to accumulate and then DNA has diversified. And because DNA has diversified, now we live on a planet where there are thousands and thousands of different species of living things. It's amazing that it's all come from one origin in the very early beginning, but it's happened due to mutations over billions of years. 
So that's how life has evolved. And it's got a lot to do with something called natural selection, which is in another video that you can check out. And another thing you might be wondering, we've been talking a lot about mutations. What causes these mutations to happen? Well, there's another video on that too, which you can check out. Thanks very much for watching as always, and I'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook, and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.